So there's a common problem that can come up within an event driven architecture, which is handling huge files. So let's say we're YouTube and we're dealing with videos. And whenever a, try, a client tries to upload a huge video to our servers, right, like here, service A is basically responsible for processing the upload. And then service A is going to send a message to a message queue so that our message queue can distribute this message across different services. So for example, it's gonna send a message to service B and service B is responsible for compressing. So we're gonna compress it here. Let's say service C is responsible for encoding, all right? Then there's also service D that's responsible for doing a copyright check, okay? So you get the idea. And this is great because we can do all of these operations asynchronously, meaning our message queue is going to deliver this message to all the services that have subscribed to a specific channel or a queue in our case. All right, now where does the problem arise? When we're dealing with huge images or huge videos, basically huge files. Why? Because RabbitMQ or usually message brokers are designed to be working with small data. Of course, there's a default limit for a RabbitMQ, let's say 128 megabytes, but this is like the really max maximum limit that you can still tweak but I would say anything above 10 megs is already going to have um, a back pressure or some influence on the performance of your application because all of these messages are going to wait a lot to be processed and that's gonna put a lot of pressure on your RAM because the data within a message queue is mostly stored in the RAM and basically distributing it across different services is going to put pressure on the throughput. So basically, messaging queues have limitations. And if you're dealing with huge data, in the case of YouTube, it's not gonna be 128 megabytes, but rather multiple gigabytes. So you're gonna definitely face some performance degradation. There's also another point, which is data protection. Let's say your message queue is actually a third party queue, or a third party application. And in some cases, you actually want to avoid sending some sensitive information to the queue and rather skip the queue. So how do you do that? Well, there's a pattern called a claim check pattern. In this case, service A is going to send a token. This can be a unique identifier or just like a specific hash that's going to be called a claim check token and it's gonna be sent to a message queue. Then a message queue is going to distribute it to specific services. For example, service B is subscribed to this particular queue, so it's going to receive this claim check token. So claim check token can be parsed or it can be sent as a JSON as well. And it's basically going to contain maybe a hash or specifically a URL. It's going to contain a URL to this storage so that it knows that it can access something on this, this URL. Well, what is it gonna access? Well, it's basically going to access our video because the service A actually sent the video to our S3 storage. So Amazon S3, basically a huge storage where usually you would store big files and it's more durable than simply sending this huge file into a message queue like we did here. Instead of sending the video as a message here, we're actually uploading the message into a storage and then sending a claim check and then service B gets the claim check token and knows that, oh, under this URL, I can actually access some kind of a file and then it's basically going to grab this file. This is a better architecture when dealing with huge data, okay? So you can see that our network or bandwidth is much more optimized now. So we're using the right tools for our needs. Now, you can also consider that if your messages are small, let's say if you're not dealing with a video, but rather with an image here, you can actually bypass the storage and just send the image right away through a queue if let's say it's under 10 megabytes. So you might also consider data deletion, meaning if you don't need to store all the data in an S3 bucket, the service B, as soon as it downloads the 
artifact from a storage, it can actually make sure that the data also gets deleted or a storage has a periodic sync that also deletes the data, which is stale. Now, when we talk about storage, in this case, I consider an S3, which is a product of AWS. Now let's go back to the code. Actually, this is my Docker container or Docker Compose that's running. So we have a processor service, which is right here, service A. We have an uploader service, or rather processor service is actually service B right here. Uploader service is service A, RepTMQ is our message queue, and Minio is an alternative for an S3 bucket right here. So what is Minio? Minio is basically an open source alternative and it's S3 compatible. S3 compatible means it has the, exactly the same API as an AWS S3, but it's going to store the data on your machine locally. But you can still use it as a gateway to go through an S3 bucket, all right? So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna take a look at our code. So as I said, two services and a Docker Compose, you can find this code on my GitHub. I'm gonna put the link. So let's take a look at the index.js of the, first of all, of the uploader service. So we have an endpoint with, which is a post endpoint called slash upload. We're basically gonna take the file, we're gonna take the key, which is the name, and then we're gonna call this upload file. An upload file is using this S3 client and it's uploading the file to a Minio, which is running locally, all right? And as soon as this is done, we're gonna publish the message to a queue, to a Rebdom queue called file queue. And then the processor service has to basically subscribe to this queue called file queue and then consume any message that's incoming. So let's say we're gonna get the claim check for a specific file. And then we're gonna get the content or rather the key of this message from a Rebdom queue. And then we're able to pass this key and the bucket name to be able to download the file again from Minio, all right? And at the end, we're basically gonna acknowledge that the message has been processed. So let's open the terminal. I see that it's everything is running. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna try to upload a file, which is a multi-part form data here. And I'm simply gonna say, hello world this time, like this. I'm gonna send a request and we get a 200 okay. And it says file uploaded and clean check sent. This is from the uploading service, which was right here. So the service A basically sent the claim check and at the same time uploaded the file here. And then we get we get a message from the processor service saying that process file sample text size 13 bytes. If you guys like this short video and learned something new, smash like and subscribe for more videos like this. Half of the viewers are actually not subscribed to the channel. So let's change that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.